Hello and welcome to Truthloader's Monday show featuring your comments as well as Iron Man, Bling Bishops and Banksy. But first up, and on a more serious note, chemical weapons teams in Syria have begged opposing factions for short-term ceasefires so they can get to some of the country's most at-risk sites. Ahmet Uzumku from the Organisation for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons says their teams, alongside UN inspectors, need safe passage through areas of intense conflict to make sure Syria's chemical weapons are destroyed safely after the country officially signed up to the anti-weapons treaties on Monday. Syria is thought to have some 20 chemical weapons sites, and inspectors say that whilst government forces have been trying to transport them safely, they've only actually been able to get to five facilities so far. The team have already come under direct and indirect fire whilst in Syria, with firefights near their hotel. It's hoped a few short-term ceasefires of a couple of hours or more could help them get the job done safely. Meanwhile, and this is pretty tragic, a video has emerged of kids in an allegedly rebel-controlled area. A pretty unfortunate interpretation of the idea of war games. And now it's time for your comments, and after inadvertently admitting our love of unicorns last week, Top tip next time write something about unicorns. We bloody love unicorns. You took to the Monday Show comments section in your five or so to tell us how much you love unicorns too. Honestly, using unicorns to try and get on the Monday Show, you cynical bastards. You won't get through that easily, but maybe if you wrote a poem. In our piece on counter-terrorism under Obama, Dark Turtley Guego wrote, I love your country, that's America, at least what it's founded on, but I hate what's become of it. Nine people agreed with that. Meanwhile, in our piece on a new chemical which could protect the brain against the effects of Alzheimer's, Hans Blitz wrote, the FDA won't approve it if it works too well. Big Pharma Corp will be sure of that. They don't want to cure diseases, they want to keep sick people alive as long as possible so they can sell them medicine. Controversial, possibly, but 13 people agreed with you, Hans. And now onto some of the other stories we found and liked this week. And first up, the US Army has announced plans to research Iron Man-style body armour. Yup, whilst exoskeletons allowing superhuman strength have been tested before, the Army is calling on industry and the government to develop the next generation. A skeleton equipped with sensors, smart fibres, networking capabilities and wearable computing, with hydraulics to greatly increase the strength of the wearer in real time. The Army's pretty sure no one company can build the so-called Talos or Tactical Assault Light Operator suit, but it will be a melting pot of different research, including MIT's current attempts at a liquid body armour which becomes solid when currents are passed through it. Despite being a monumental feat of engineering and, at the moment, totally science fiction, the Army hopes to be field testing the suit within just three years. And next up, you know that thing about material possessions being unimportant in the face of spiritual wealth and the pursuit of eternal enlightenment in the arms of the almighty creator that most religions have? Well, Germans bi- How did I mess that bit up after doing that last bit? Well, German Bishop Franz Peter Tebards van Elst might have something to say about that. He's facing calls for his resignation after spending 31 million euros, that's 26 million pounds or 42 million dollars, or six times the original estimates, on his residency in Limburg. Yep, all that on a house. Germans all pay a compulsory tax based on their income to the church, so the spending has understandably caused some consternation, with Franz Peter being dubbed luxury bishop and protesters holding vigil outside his house and the city's cathedral. He himself insists he doesn't have a pompous lifestyle, but nevertheless has been ordered to Rome to explain his spending to senior figures. He's not yet explained exactly where all the money went publicly, but has reportedly flown to Rome via budget airline. Every little helps. And finally, street art legend come anti-art activist Banksy has been selling off some of his latest works in New York. But far from a poncy auction in a champagne-filled gallery, this was the sale room, a stall in Central Park where the artworks, sort of disguised as knockoffs, were flogged for just $60 a piece by an old man who, as far as we know, isn't Banksy. Amazingly, just three people grabbed the works. One man in Chicago bought four to decorate his walls, a mum bought two for her kids after negotiating a two-for-one offer, and a New Zealand tourist bought two as well. The day's takings were just a few hundred dollars, but the works are estimated to be worth up to $30,000 each, meaning the buyers got a bit of a bargain. Banksy's in New York at the moment, but why he pulled the stunt is a bit of a mystery. To make someone's day simply as a stunt? 
for the thrill perhaps, or simply to pull one over on the art world and it's placing arbitrary values on inherently low value objects. Well, no one knows. He probably just did it for art. That's it for this week's Monday show. As always, do that like and share thing y'all do so well. Subscribe if you're new and we'll keep on bringing you awesome videos.